In this lesson, we are gonna talk about direct and inverse variation. It's a very easy, small little topic, and I can promise that by the end of this lesson, you'll feel much better about it. So, let me make it very, very simple for you. What I want you to do is just focus on this table on the left-hand side, and I want you to just multiply these two numbers together. What do you get? 36. Then I want you to multiply these two numbers together. What do you get? 64. Okay, so because these two answers are not the same, Multiplying doesn't work, okay? Kevin, what are you on about? Trust me, just keep going. Now I want you to divide them. So say the bottom number divided by the top number. So 12 divided by three, what is that? Four. 16 divided by four, what is that? Four. 20 divided by five, what is that? Four. 24 divided by six, what does that give you? Four. Look at that. Every time we divided the numbers, we kept getting the same answer. So what did we do? We divided. Okay, and so when you have to, when you divide the numbers and you keep getting the same answer, that is called direct variation. So it's easy to remember because they both start with D. So when you divide, that's, when you divide and it keeps giving you the same answer, that is direct. Okay, let's go to the next one. So try to divide these ones. So say 20 divided by one, what does that give you? 20. 10 divided by two, Five. Oh, so that's not working. So let's try multiply. One multiplied by 20 is 20. Two multiplied by 10 is 20. Ooh, this is looking good. Five multiplied by four is 20. One multiplied by 20 is 20. Ah, so here we multiplied the numbers and it gave us the same answer. So if you multiply them, then that is a, an, an example of inverse. Okay, so how are you going to remember that? Well, you're just going to have to remember that the two Ds go together, and then the other way is obviously whatever's left. Okay, so when you divide, if you divide the numbers and you keep getting the same answer, that's direct variation. When you multiply the numbers, that's inverse. Something else that's really interesting is what is happening to these numbers at the top? Are they getting bigger or smaller? Were well, they getting larger? Okay, what is happening to these numbers? Are they getting larger or smaller? They're getting larger. Ah, okay, so as the one gets larger, the other one gets larger. That is a direct, meaning that it's the, it does the same thing. It's directly related. Look at the next one. Well, look at these ones. What are these numbers doing? They're getting larger. But look at these ones. Ah, they're getting smaller. That is called inverse okay so when the one gets bigger the other one gets smaller that's inverse but if it's if it's if the one gets larger and the other one gets larger that is direct now some of you might be wondering kevin what if the numbers get smaller at the top and the bottom well that's also direct as long as they do the same thing um whereas here this one might have gotten smaller and this one might have gotten larger so when they do the same thing direct when they do the opposite thing inverse okay hope you have that so far so I just want to quickly remind us what happened here. Here we were dividing. So what we what we said was that um, for the first one, we said 12 over 3, and that gave us 4. Then for the next one, we said 16 over 4, and that gave us 4. So whenever we're taking the y value and we're dividing it by the x value, we kept getting the same number. We kept getting a 4, right? 20 divided by 5, we kept getting the same answer, okay? Um, so this number here, which stays the same, we kept getting four, 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 four. This is called, it's called your constant of variation. We are looking at this topic of variation, and this is just the constant number. So it's the constant of variation, very original, okay? Now in the next, in this example here, we just kept multiplying them. We said one times 20 is 20. That's what we did over there. Then we said two times 10, is 20. I mean, yeah, that's right. So we kept multiplying them. So we said that x multiplied by y is 20. So once again, that would be your constant of variation. So in general, okay, so like the general scenario, like these are like the rules that you need to remember. When it is direct, and we're going to do some examples after this. Check out the next slide. Oh, look at that. Coming up very soon, so stick around. So when you have direct variation, that was D4, divide. So when you divided the numbers, we kept getting 4. 
but you're not always going to get four for every single example in life. This was only because of the numbers I was, I was choosing over here, but we get different examples in real life, but you will always get the same number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that number a K. Your teacher might use a different letter. Um, in this example I did on the previous slide, we kept getting a four, but in real life, you might get different scenarios. You might get three or eight or 12 or, so we're just gonna say K for now. Hope that makes sense. If it was inverse variation, then what did we keep doing? Did we keep multiplying them or did we keep dividing them? We kept multiplying them and we kept getting the same number. In that example, we kept getting 20, but I mean, in other examples, you're not only gonna get 20, um, but you're gonna get the same number. So we're gonna call that a K. Okay, so these are the two big formulas that I want you to um, remember. And as I said, your teacher might use uh, different letters for the K part. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind, okay? So if you understand that, if you have those two formulas, write them down on a piece of paper because we're gonna use them now um, in our uh, next examples, okay? So here they say that Y... Um, so let's just write our two formulas actually. So if it's direct, then we know that there's a nice formula we can use which says that we divide them, okay? And then if it's inverse, then we multiply them. Or we can say x times y or y times x, doesn't really matter. And that's equal to k. Okay. By the way, by the way, um, there are other ways of writing this. Um, if you get the y alone, some teachers like to do that. If you had to get the y by itself, okay, then um, what would that look like? Well, that would look like this, y equals, so to how, how would you get this x over to the other side? Well, to get this x to the other side, you would multiply it, okay, um, because you would have to multiply it by x on this side and multiply it by x on this side so that it would cancel out on that side and so you'd end up with that. So some people or some students like to use this formula, other students like to use that formula. They both actually the same thing um, and your teacher might use both at the same, like in different scenarios. So you just have to be comfortable with both, okay? And the same is true over here. If you had to get the Y alone, so if you get Y alone, then um, that's quite easy. So if you wanna get this by itself, then you have to divide by X on both sides so that this cancels out. And so you end up with Y equals two, K of X. So these are the, the two formulas that uh, let's just erase here. So these are the two formulas um, that you could use for inverse, and these are the two formulas that you could use for direct. So let's go add in our formulas. Let's add up, let's update our formulas that we have. So for direct, you could either use y over x equals to k, or if you want the y by itself, you could use that. Then if it's indirect or inverse, sorry, I don't know why I say that, inverse, then um, then you could say uh, that when you multiply them, you get the same, or if you had to get the y by itself, then it's like that. Okay, so those are the two like things that you need to know right now. So here they say that y varies directly. Okay, cool, so we're not gonna use any of these, okay, um, as x, so y varies directly as x. So now you need to make a choice. Um, do you want to use, uh, do you wanna use this one? Or do you wanna use this one? So it's up to you, but I'll show you as we go along. They tell us that y is 14 when x is five, find y when x is three. Ah, so they're only giving us the y's and the x's. So if we go back to our previous tables, here they only gave us y's and x's. But we have a problem because I, I don't know about you, but on my formulas that I can see, there's k's, there's k's. Now we need those k values. The k value is the constant. What was the constant over here? Um, here, here the constant was a four, we need that. And here the constant was a 20. So we need to go find that constant. So we know that we're not gonna use these formulas. So to find the constant, we could just use this because k is the constant. So we could say y over x is equal to k. Um, and what you do is you go fill in any partners. Now, what do I mean by partners? Well, if you look on the table, those are partners, okay? 
those are partners, they go together, those are partners, and those are partners. So they go together. So they said that when, um, when y is 14 when x is 5. So these two are partners. We're not going to use the 3 and the 14. They're not partners. They said that y is 14 when x is 5. So they go together. So we're going to go, say, 14 over 5, and we're going to get our k value. So if you had to go work that out on your calculator, you get 2.8. Now, that 2.8 is beautiful. Why is it beautiful, Kevin? Why are you saying weird stuff about maths? Um, that is beautiful because that number never changes for this particular question. Um, in the previous example, what was the beautiful number over here? 12 divided by 3. Uh, Kevin, can you stop saying beautiful number, dude? It's pretty weird. It's just maths, bro. Like, let's just get done. Um, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know why I'm having a conversation with myself. I'm being indoors for too long, I guess. Time, I guess i got to get out and go hit the mountains and the trails and get out and get some sun. Um, <laughs> so here the number was 4. Remember, we kept dividing them and we kept getting 4. And it never changed. So once you have your value of k, it is a constant. It never changes for that particular question. So this 2.8 never, ever, ever changes for this for the rest of this question. So now we can go to this formula, and we can say y equals to kx, because they said, can you please find y when x is 3? Ha! Ah. So we know that x is 3, so we can plug x is 3. We also know k, because we just worked it out, and it never, ever changes. So we can say y is equal to k, which is 2.8, multiplied by x, which is 3, and then we can go work it out. What do we get? 8.4, and that's our answer over there. So here's our next example. Now, this one's weird because here they have x squared. But Kevin, you've only showed us... Uh, just wait, Kevin. Come on, bro. Why are you doing this to us? You only showed us... You only showed us ones with y and x. So, I know. So, um, I've showed you this formula. And I also showed you y equals to kx. Okay? And I also showed you this one. And for indirect, I've showed you um, yx equals to k or y equals to k over x. I've never spoken about x squared. But, 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 the x and the y, where did I actually get that from? I went and I got that from the table, okay? That's where I got the x and the y from. But the table could have been something different. The table could have had an x squared over here. Okay, then I would have had to just update my formulas. So instead of saying um, y over x is equal to 4, I would have said y over x squared is equal to 4. So that's where I got it from. The y and the x don't even have to be y and x. It could have been w and v. You get it? it, it I just got the y and the x because that's what they used in this table. Okay, but it could have been, as I said, it could have been um, a t, and this could have been like a w squared. Then I would have said that t over w squared is always equal to 4. Does that make sense? So that's where I got the x and the y from. It's not always going to be x and y. Yes, we use x and y a lot in maths, but it doesn't always have to be x and y. It could be x squared or whatever. So we're going to do some examples now, and it should make a bit more sense. So you've got to look for the key words here. Um, so it says that y varies inversely. Ah, so why did I say indirect again? Inverse, Kevin, inverse. So we're using inverse, so we're not going to use these ones. Scratch them out. Okay, so it says that y, okay, so we're going to use y, and we're going to use x squared. Okay, so you're going to use these formulas now, but you're going to use y, and you're going to use x squared. You're not going to use um, just normal x. So that's it. You just update your formulas over there. Um, so they said that um, they told us that they've given us um, y, they've given us the x, which we'll obviously just plug into the x squared just now. Um, but we don't have any k. We need to find k. We need to find our constant of proportionality. So I guess we'd probably want to use this formula first, right? So we could say that y x squared equals to k. Um, and so they said that, now you've got to find the matching pairs. They said that y is 10 when x is 9. So they go together. So if you say y is 10, and then x is 9, so you're going to say 9 squared equals to k. And if you had to go multiply these two together, you're going to get 810. And that's k. 
So now we have k. Once you have k, it is awesome because now we can, we, k doesn't change for this question. So now we can go and say that y is equal to k over x squared. And so we can say that um, find y says find y when x is 6. Okay, so we know k is now 810 and then x is 6 like that. And if we had to go work this out, we would end up with 22 point five or twenty two comma five, however your teacher writes it, as our final answer for that one. We still have another two examples. Here's our next one. So let's quickly go write out our formula. So if it's direct, hope you guys are getting this. And inverse. If you ever do feel a bit stuck, remember just go watch it again. Um, that does happen. When I was in sc uh, school or um, varsity or college, um, there were many times where I'd watch it or I'll try to learn something and I wouldn't get it the first time, hardly ever. Um, but then when you go watch the second or the third, then it's much better. Okay, so with direct, we know that that's when you divide. So we can either use this formula or if you wanna get y by itself, then we use that formula. Then with inverse, that's when we multiply them. So you can either say y times x or x times y. And then um, if you wanna get y by itself, then it goes like that. So it says that y varies direct. Okay, so we're not gonna use you guys, sorry about that. Um, now, once again, we don't have any k value. So we need to get our k value. So I think it's best if we use this formula. And we know that y is five when x is 14. So they go together. So five over 14 is equal to k. So k is equal to five over 14. I just wanna see if that simplifies. Okay, I would leave it as a fraction. Don't write it as a decimal. Um, so there's k, great. Now we can drop down to this formula over here because now they wanna know what is y when x is 10? So x is 10, so we can just plug that over there. Uh, k we have, k we have, k never changes. Remember, it's a constant of proportion, of variation. Constant means it doesn't change. So we can say y is equal to k, which is five over 14, multiplied by x, which is 10. And if we had to go work that out, we end up with 25 over seven as our final answer. Here's our last example. So let's quickly write down our formulas. So by now, you guys should be feeling pretty good, I would hope. So with direct, we know that that's when you divide them, d for divide. And then if you get the k, I mean, if you get the y by itself, you write it like that. And then you get indirect, inverse, Kevin. Goodness me, inverse. <laughs> so then we say uh, y multiplied by x. We said that that's always gonna be equal to the same number. And then um, y equals to k over x. So here they say y varies inverse. Okay, so scratch these ones out. We're not gonna use that one. Um, as x squared, okay, don't panic. So we're using y and x squared. So we'll just change the x to x squared. Okay, that's easy. Now it says that, uh, okay, so we need to find k. So we use the formula for k. There we go. Um, so they tell us that when y is five, x is six over five, okay? So when y is five, then x is six over five. So we put the x is six over five, but then we square it. Then we just go type all of that on the calculator so we can see what k is. Okay, so this one's nice because it's, it's a decimal that stops. So you can, you can keep it as a fraction or as a decimal. It's 7.2 or seven comma two, however you wanna write that. So now we have k. So now we can go use this formula over here. So y equals to k over x squared. So now they say, find y when x is two. So x is two, so you plug that over there. And k we have, because we worked it out as seven comma two, that's amazing. So we can say y equals to seven comma two over, well, let's say seven point or seven comma, however you wanna write that. And then uh, x is two, and then remember to square it. And your final answer should be nine over five, nine over five. All right, so that's it. I hope you understand how to use direct and inverse variation.